okay, I made this problem and I know that it's hard. Okay, it's you have to make some estimations and some some rough guesses, uh, but there's still some physics in here. And so I, I really want to challenge you to work on problems like this because they're they're real world problems. It's not given everything. You're given everything right there and you just have to put it together. Uh, it's more like real life. Okay, and this is a real world problem because I actually wanted to do this demo. I wanted to take a magnet and pass it through a coil and light up an LED and I want to say, okay, is it even possible? Okay, so let's just draw with a picture. Here's my little magnet, north, south, and then here's my coil of wire. Uh, and I want to, this makes a magnetic field B. Uh, the magnitude of that is 0.2 Tesla, which is pretty high. Uh, this is hooked up to an LED light. There's my LED. Uh, and so I need uh, I need 1.5 volts. So I need delta V equals EMF of 1.5 volts. Uh, and I need 10 milliamps. Now that one's a little bit harder. Uh, so let's just let's just not worry about that right now. And, and I, I didn't give you everything here. Okay. And I understand that. So I have a magnet, magnetic field. Can I pass this through a coil to make it light up? Now, there's another thing you didn't I didn't really estimate. Here's a here's a coil of wire. And this is actually probably the one I wanted to use. I want to pass it through here. So how many turns would, would I need there? Uh, you're just gonna have to guess. You could do one turn if you want. Let's just do one turn. So the first thing we want to do is use Faraday's law. This says that the EMF around a loop is the change in magnetic flux over the change in time. If you don't have that in your solution, then you're on the wrong track to begin with. Clearly this has to do with changing magnetic flux. So the magnetic flux is gonna be B A cosine theta. So in this case, uh, there's my area, it's perpendicular to the area, so theta is equal to zero. So it's just gonna be B times A. Okay, well how big is my coil? I never told you that, right? Well you can't, you know, a bigger coil seems like it'd be better, but <clears throat> then you don't get a good of the magnetic field. You can pick whatever you want. If you use a mile wide uh, coil, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's fine. Okay, you need to pick something though. So I'm gonna pick this coil right here. So let's say that has a radius of one centimeter. So I'm gonna say R equals 0 0.01 meters. So now A is gonna be pi times R squared. So I know B, I know A. Now. What about the change in flux? I need to know some amount of time here. Okay, and this is for one loop. So, <clears throat> let's say I have this magnet, and I and I'm I'm super fast. I'm like super fast. Uh, how fast could I get that magnet into the loop? Um, I'm gonna say a fifth. I'm gonna say delta t. I'm just guessing here. Zero point zero five seconds. You can have any value. Any value I would accept. If you said it took a year, I would say that's a little crazy, but you go with it, okay? You go with your value because that's your estimate. I think that's not a very realistic estimate, but if you keep following through with it, I'm not going to take off points for that. So now I can calculate the EMF. EMF is just going to be B A over delta T because I went from zero flux. This is actually a delta. This is actually B minus zero, B A minus zero the change of flux where I don't have the magnet near it and then I move it in. And magnets are actually more complicated than this because they don't make a constant magnetic field, but that's all cool. Okay, so let's put in my values here. So I'm gonna get uh, 0.2 Tesla times uh, pi times 0.01 squared, all of that over 0 0.05. And I get EMF of one loop, let's pull out my calculator here. <coughs> Okay, so I'm gonna say 0.2, enter, pi, I gotta turn that into number, times 0 0.01, enter, squared, times 0 0.05, divided by. And I get 1.26 times 10 to the negative third uh, volts. So if, what if I wanna get 1.5 volts? Well, I would need N equals 1,000. Okay, so I think if you did it this way, if I had n equals 1,000, actually more than that. So let's say n equals 2,000. 2,000 2, turns, then I would get over 1.5 volts. Now, would that be enough current? Um, I'm not gonna even address that, because I'm okay if you got this far. Um, 
So how many turns are here? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is like 20. So it would have to be a lot more turns uh, than what I have right there, 2,000 turns. But I think that is possible. I think this whole thing is plausible. I think one of my estimates that's the, the, the worst is this right here, delta T. I think it's probably bigger than that. I'd probably say 0.1 seconds is better, which would uh, you know make me have to have a lot more turns. But still, it's on the order of possibility. So here, let's just review. You definitely have to talk about flux and Faraday's law, and then just make some estimates after that. And I'm okay with your estimates. There you go.